hey you guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be reviewing a really cheap practice hand from amazon so let's go ahead and open it up this hand comes from a company called mateys i believe that's how you pronounce it and when you get it it'll come in a box like this it comes in plastic for protection it doesn't have any instructions in there though my first thoughts when I first opened this up is that this hand did look like a quality item. Here's a quick comparison to the red iguana hand right there on the side. As you can see, the hand it looks realistic. It does have the whales in there. So that way you can put in your tips, your practice tips. As you can see, the red iguana hand also has whales for tips. So you guys, if you are purchasing a practice hand like this and it doesn't have the wheels in it, my opinion is not worth the money. So you wanna make sure your hand has those wheels for you to put your tips in. Um, it'll just make your life so much easier. What you see me doing here is I'm kind of just messing around with it and just trying to get the feel for the quality, the weight of it. As you can see, there's really no imperfections on this hand, which I really liked. I would just give you guys some close up of the nail beds. It was very nicely made. You see on the bottom, there's no imperfections and I'm comparing it to my hand. So it's a tad bit smaller than my hand and the top portion of it was pretty flawless as well. So this is the red iguana practice hand size comparison to my hand as well. What you see me doing here is bending the fingers back and forth. Now they don't advise you to do this for the red iguana hand because there's wires inside that one that could damage the hand. So I thought that was pretty cool, honestly, that this does bend without those issues. There was this one little imperfection on here. I think that's just extra silicone sticking out. So what I did is I just got my scissors and I just clipped it off as much as I could without creating any more damage. But other than that, we are good to go, you guys. I'm loving this hand so far. Let me show you how to do the stand that it came with. So you just put this little piece on here and then you'll wanna push that ball into the other part until it snaps. Once it's in place, you go ahead and screw this piece up until it's nice and snug. Now, whenever I'm putting plastic parts together, I don't like to tighten it too much and fear that it could crack or break. So just be mindful of that. Speaking of that, if you guys can hear, this is made out of a kind of a plastic material, but they did have instructions on the website and I found out I was really able to bend it with no issues. So that was great. So another quick comparison, the red iguana hand did not come with a stand. When I did the review for that, I had to use my phone stand and you would have to purchase a stand separately with that red iguana hand. That was a bonus for this one for me as well. This stand was also amazing, you guys. As you see, it has an unlatch and latch suction cup thing. And this thing is strong, okay? I am not exaggerating. Right now, it's actually on the unlatched position and I done shook the table and it's still not going anywhere. So you do not have to worry about this thing coming up off the table when you're in the middle of your designs or anything like that. And in fact, I had to use the other side of my rhinestone picker tool to even get that suction cup to unlatch. So there it is, you guys. It does move from side to side because of that ball that's on the base of it. And I'm just gonna give you guys kind of a walk around of it while it's on the table. You can kind of see in front, like how high it is up off the table. So you guys, as long as you have a sturdy surface, sturdy flat surface, you're gonna be able to use this hand with no issues at all. It's very beginner friendly, I feel, especially the price, okay? And as you see this ball here, it allows you to move it up and down. It'll allow you move it from side to side and it's on there really great. So once again, the stand, like I said, even when I unlatch it, it's not going anywhere, okay? It's so strong and that is amazing. I love that. Um, so that is it for the hand so far. <laughs> I think we fiddled with it enough. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna do a design today for you guys. 
and when I recorded this video for the unboxing I didn't know how to use that stand I'm gonna admit I later on found out through the website because it didn't have instructions that came with the hand so I didn't use the stand through this video but let me go ahead and get my extra long tips and to me honestly these kinds of tips are the best for these practice hands as you see me comparing the red iguana those are the tips that come with that red iguana practice hand um, they're really short and then you could add more tips to it if you want a longer length but for me personally i love using these tips and i will leave the link for these tips down below and along with the nail practice hand of course you guys so i'm gonna finish putting these tips in one thing i did have to do though for the pinky is i had to customize one of these tips because it was so small that pinky nail bit but that's okay you know yet sometimes you have to customize things in order for them to fit and just do what works for you in that moment and i'm also going to go ahead and file the sides of them just so they're smooth and ready for my nail art and the thumb fit in there easily with no issues and i just did i did a pull test to make sure that they're not going to come out of there and these were not coming out they're staying in there very steadily so what you see me doing right here is I'm using an alcohol prep pad and some acetone. This is how I like to prep my nails. It just takes the shine off and I don't have to foul them. So I'm gonna get my polish ready for this design. I will be doing a drag marble nail art design today, you guys. So if you've never seen me do that, um, this will be kind of like a tutorial on how to achieve that kind of design. First, I'm gonna go in here with this cherry I believe it's called cherry soda from um, nail attic which is now called nail reserve I keep calling them nail attic <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one so this will be my base color and we're just gonna cover the nail completely and then we're gonna cure that this hand was able to go in and out of my large nail lamp with no issues so the next step in achieving this marble design I'm gonna put down a base coat and this will help with the technique of this drag marble. Now I am just putting on my first color of polish that I want to be involved in this design. And I'm gonna make like a curved line on the top portion of the nail. And then I'm gonna make another curved line on the bottom portion of the nail, like a backward C on the top and then a regular C on the bottom part. Next, we're going in with another color and I'm just gonna put that right by those top curved designs. You wanna make sure you have enough of the color. The kind of drag marble design I'm going for is a flower. So I, I've attempted to make like petals on the nail. And what you see me doing and hear me doing while I'm dragging this brush through this polish is I'm rinsing my brush off in acetone and I'm wiping it off in this little jar that I keep by, which I will show you guys that a little bit later in the video, exactly how that jar looks. But it's very important to do that step when you're doing drag marble. You want that brush to be absolutely clean before every drag through of this brush or else you're just gonna, it's gonna look just a hot mess, believe me. <laughs> you gotta take that time to clean that brush off. And then you wanna cure it ASAP so that doesn't um, spread everywhere because you do have that base gel underneath it. And it'll act like a blooming gel after a while. So you wanna cure that design once you get it done. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the rest of them because this is the base color I want for all the nails. You guys, while I'm doing this, if you're new here, please hit that sub button if you're enjoying my content and if you found it helpful. And if you're liking my video, remember to hit that like button, you guys. That really helps the algorithm suggest more of my content and gets it out there to people who might find it helpful and enjoyable. I am using my Beatles nail art brush and I will leave all the links down in the description below for these products, you guys, if you're interested in anything on here. So once again, I am doing those curved lines with the different colors side by side. And this is the jar I was telling you guys about. So I have a little sponge in there with my acetone. 
And what that sponge does is it dries off my brush from the acetone a little bit more too because you don't want a wet brush when you're dragging through this design either. That will just make it spread more and you won't get those clean cuts as you see here that I'm getting. If that brush is wet, it, like I said, it's just gonna make that design spread and it's not gonna come out how you want it. So that's another important part. Make sure the brush is clean and make sure it is dry as you're dragging through your designs. So these are just tips I love to give out through my videos because you know when people do art sometimes they don't explain to you how it's being done they don't really give you the different techniques for you to achieve what they're achieving so i always try to do that you guys in my videos if i can help someone else achieve something they want to achieve then i'm down for it you know spread the love spread the knowledge that's what i feel like i love to do throughout my videos okay enough of that <laughs> let's get back to the design so on this one i just did one big um flower so i'm gonna do one big curve down and then another big curve right beside it and then again i'm just dragging through both of those colors starting from the outside of that first line and working it towards the middle So I'm just gonna let you guys watch the thumb process without talking. <laughs> Okay, so there it is. I think these nails are coming out amazing so far. I will be adding some butterflies to this set because flowers and butterflies to me, I feel go hand in hand. When I do my foil, I like to hold it up to the nail to see which ones I like on there. I will be using McCart nail foil glue and this foil is also from McCart as well. Like I said, I will leave the links down below for you guys. So this is the pattern I chose for this finger and I still struggle, okay you guys? <laughs> I still struggle with applying nail foil. So um, if you guys see a little bit of imperfections on these, just it is what it is, okay? Like I said, you know, I'm not a perfectionist. Um, I'm still learning and I still haven't gotten this down. Let me know if you guys struggle with nail foils. I will have to definitely try some stickers in the future just to see um, how that works. But I do love to use nail foils. That's why I keep trying it and keep going at it. And um, the outcome is what it is. I feel like they did come out really cute though. I feel the butterflies were a perfect choice for this drag marble flower background that I went ahead and did. And if you guys notice my nails that I have on, they're actually a press on set that I will be coming out with a video soon. And look at that, that's cute. The bottom half, some of it didn't come off, but like I said, that's okay. Um, and a lot of times you guys, if your foil is not perfect, you can go over it with a little glitter top coat like I'm doing. You guys will see me do that from time to time. Glitter will help fix those little imperfections just glitter does magic okay um if you do nails i know you guys will agree in some cases where stuff doesn't turn out how you want to you just throw a little glitter in there and bam okay you're good to go so this glitter top coat is from born pretty and i just love it i used to use mccart's glitter top coat a lot but since i got the born pretty one um i've been using that left and right okay so what you see me doing now is I'm showing you guys how this hand is posable. One thing though, I noticed when I was posing this hand, the fingers would like pop up out of place. The red iguana hand definitely is easier to pose because it is a posable one. This one you will have to do a little bit work with. Um, you have to work it around to get those exact poses you want for your, for your thumbnails, whatever you're trying to, you know, pose it for. But in the end, you can pose it. It'll take just a little bit more effort than it would with a red iguana hand. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. 
I will leave the prices comparison for this hand and the red iguana hand and the price comparisons as far as what it comes with, what the red iguana hand comes with. I'm going to leave those right at the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you like my set. If you did, please leave this video a like and remember to subscribe if you made it this far. Just hit that subscribe button. You know, I know you're signed in already probably. Just go ahead, hit it. And uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for watching.